Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and today I have more of a hardware video than a, a software video. Uh, I recently got my hands on an RTX 5090 and I'm upgrading from a 4090. So all the benchmarks that I found out there were more gaming related, but not all of us use a graphics card for gaming. So I, I use it mainly like for 3D stuff, for animation, rendering, some uh, artificial intelligence workflows. So I just thought that I'm going to do some comparisons myself, small tests, and I'm going to present the results today in a hopefully very short video because, you know, this is just more of an informative piece. I ran a couple of tests, so my test setup was not too sophisticated, right? Like I had, like I, I ran all of the programs before I switched my graphics card, then I ran a couple of them after I switched my Reddit, my my graphics card. Going into the first test for me, the most important was Blender. How long does it render for a test animation that I made? So don't judge the animation. It's it, that, that animation was purely for in, informing this this workflow and this test flow. And I let it run for like 400 frames. And I think it started out, the 4090 started out with like mm, seven to nine seconds of frame. It took around 56 minutes. I think I have the result here, 57 minutes and two seconds to render all of those 400 frames we had an average frame time of in the beginning seven then we went up to like 11 seconds in between when the shots got more complex and then back down to, to seven but like the average was somewhere between seven and 11 seconds per frame which is which is um, um, amazing and actually pretty pretty good i switched over to the 5090 i had major trouble because i ran into issues with my power supply unit with my with my PSU because I had a thousand watt PSU in there, which was fine for doing Blender and gaming and all of this. That's no problem at all. But when it comes to AI workflows, it was severely lacking power and it, it threw my fuse all the time. And so it's uh, I, I had to upgrade like my PSU. But in the process of this, um, I, I lost I lost the recording. However, I did make a note how long it took me with the 5090, which is 39 minutes and 58 seconds. That is a significant markup. I remember the average frame times to between five to seven seconds a frame. So, and obviously this scales over time. Like this is an hour long render and everybody who, who's in the 3D industry knows that like an hour long render is essentially nothing. So um, take that as a very positive sign. I was pleasantly surprised by the raw performance and power output I got with the 50, 5090. Maybe moving over to a other probably more conventional workflow is light baking because why would why other from rendering would you else need a graphics card with a lot of power maybe for light for light baking um, i used unity i didn't check unreal yet but i used unity and you can see that i have a pretty light setup for my rendering is like a ps1 inspired world that i that i have here and i'm just doing some simple light baking i have i used all the same settings this is for mixed reality production so it's not over the top there's the focus is really on, on performance and not on, uh, on on going overboard with all of this you can see that with my 4090 i had a 157 in bake time so on under two minutes, which again is very quick for, for light baking, but this is a small scene, so that's, 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 that's cool and all. And jumping over to the 5090, I let the same test run a couple of times just to verify. And also we can see here that the NVIDIA 5090 took me about one minute and 33 seconds, going with 1,483 M-rays per second. So obviously this only gets better and scales with the complexity of your scene. So if you have a bigger scene, obviously the 5090 is going to be much more performant because of its 32 gigabytes of VRAM. So keep that in mind. This is a very simple scene, probably not the optimal uh, comparison between those two. The margins seem pretty close right now, um, but you can imagine how that scales over time and over like more complex projects so far. You can decide yourself if you want to spend 3000 bucks on, on this one. Going on with more uh, AI heavy workflows. Here again, my disclaimer, my 1000 watt PSU did not suffice with AI workflows. It did suffice with all of those, whatever you just saw. But when it comes to like AI workflows, they tend to draw more power quicker than your traditional rendering gaming workflows in an overload. So there's a specific spike and my 1000 watt PSU straight power 12 from Be Quiet did not make it. So uh, I upgraded to like a 1300 watts dark power 13 uh, power supply. And now all of the tests are running well because we are switching now over to the AI workflows. First of all, upscaling the render that we did. The render I made is 
was upscaled with Topaz AI video rendering and they have a particular particular demanding renderer called Ria for four, four times upscaling. The video we rendered out was in 1080 by 1080, so it was a square format, and we wanted to upscale it four times, do some fancy, fancy stuff, some some sharpening and all, all of this, and we rendered it out as an ProRes as well. And applied a two times slow-mo, just to see how it did. And this one was rather quick, just shy of two minutes, one minute and 59 seconds. This one up here uh, is, is the result of the 4090 and two below, you see the results with the 5090, one minute and 37 seconds. I have to admit, the margin is not as big as I hoped it would be. It might be better with other models, but again, here we are on the lower end of the performance upgrade that I expected. However, still quicker. I do, I think I do have a video or like at least a screenshot of how much power it, uh, it actually drew. Yes, there it is. You can see that my GPU uh, itself drew 500 and almost 550 watts of power alone. Moving, moving further to local run uh, AI stuff. There's a cool project out there called Stable Projectors. If you have seen the last two videos that I made about Treepro AI, this is basically the same thing, but run locally. You can download a 3D generation model, you can download all of the image models, and here you can essentially create your own 3D models and texture it in within this program. Generate those textures, in paint those textures. It is a very competent tool run by, on, by only a, a single dude that is reliant on the, your help on Patreon. So go over there, show some love, show some support. Here as well, the performance setup, or like the, the test setup was pretty easy. I did not change too many settings. Uh, 70 steps, B count, like the, the image count was for generating four 1K textures for the model that is already in there and just seeing how long it, ta uh, how long it takes. And if I remember correctly, it took some of the, like, yeah, one minute and 10 seconds to generate four of those textures with the 4090. I ran those tests a couple of times. This result was pretty consistent. Comparing it to the 5090, same settings, left the same, everything is, this, everything is the same. And it took me just shy under one minute. Because obviously with the 5090, I ran Afterburner in the background to see what, what's going on. And it didn't really touch on, on the VRAM that is on, on the 5090. Again, you can download models that take more advantage of all of the VRAM usage. So the performance we saw did not come from all of the extra VRAM, but did in fact just come from raw power of this graphics card, which is already impressive. But just so you know, this is the minimum performance upgrade you can, you can expect. Fine, fine tuning some stuff, tweaking some stuff and you can really see where this, where this card shines. The last test we have is a local video generation. I used WAN, WAN 2.1 text to video, 14 billion parameters. Running it on the 49, it took a while. You can see in the final outcome, um, again, don't judge the outcome, it's just, it's just a video. It took 2,146 seconds, which is a bit under 36 minutes for this actually really crappy video. <laughs> Jumping over to the 5090, you can see video generation took a lot of power, 660, 665 watts at peak, and you can see it peaked a lot of times. My computer ran pretty warm actually, but the final generation itself only took 1816 seconds, which is about 30 minutes. So you can see, again, this is a roughly 15 to 20% increase. So if you are running local models for creating videos and or images, that alone saves you a lot of time. Okay, so here we are. These are my quick tests. Does it make sense to upgrade from a 4090 to a 5090 as like a 3D AI artist? As you saw across all of the tests that we made, we have a at minimum upgrade of 15% sometimes 20 to 30% upgrade. But just going off of the Blender render alone, that saved me about 20 minutes, almost 20 minutes for like a one hour render. It is not rare to have renders that go over two days, 48 hours. Deduct 20% off of that, a fifth of that, all of a sudden you save yourself on around 10 hours of render time for like a single project. The 
multiply that up over the works that you do over weeks, over months, that is days and weeks saved in a single year just by having a, a better card. I hope that this short little video could inform you on the, on the decision if you want to buy a 5090 or not. Obviously, I'm going to plug my own socials in here and Patreon as well. However, I still want to highlight Stable Projectors run by all this a single dude. Go to stableprojectors.com and you know support the guy. It's an amazing software. There's a lot of cool videos. I want to make a video about it as, as well. So you can generate your own 3D models and texture them at the, at the same time. It is an amazing product, amazing project. Consider supporting the project, consider supporting me by just leaving a comment about what your questions are, what I should test next. And maybe just leaving a like there, that helps obviously the system as well. The, pro, the SEO and all of, all of the other optimization, search engine optimization. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video.